And the last time we were on the show was Saturday, where we talked for about 40 minutes regarding Vince McMahon and Paul Levesque and this lawsuit and everything else. And uh, here we are on Monday, Dave, and what's new? It's not so much new. It's just how much uh, coverage the thing has gotten. It was uh, all over uh, you know, CNN, New York Times, Deadline. Well, Deadline's had multiple stories, but they had another one today. Um, a lot of it is the fallout of the press conference. Uh, talking about Vince leaving, um, CNN uh, um, CNN had one, and Deadline actually, I believe. Well, CNN had a story based on the idea of um, um, just the you know that they had you know why was why did Ariel Emanuel allow him in the company in the first place when they knew about this going in, and um, so Ariel Emanuel and. Uh, uh, Paul Levesque have been taking a lot of heat the last couple of days. Um, or airing more more today. Uh, Levesque's in Saturday. And um, so that's kind of it. I mean, as far as, like, what's going to happen next, um, I don't know. It appears that Brock Lesnar is not going to be around for a while. Some people think ever. Um, you know, when it comes to talent, I hate to say forever because it almost is almost never the case, especially if someone can draw. You, they always seem to find a way back. But as far as Vince, I cannot imagine um, Vince coming back this time. Um, I don't know. I mean, I was surprised last time. I was going to say, time. we did say that last time. I but there that. was a difference in that he was the owner of the company. Well, he had he and had strong armed his way back as a he, way to facilitate a sale. Yeah, he con- he had controlling interest in the stock. He was not the majority shareholder, but he had the majority of votes based on the way that the um, when they went public way back when, like 1999, he designed it so essentially his stock was worth more voting wise, where the McMahon family stock was worth more voting wise. So basically, it was basically designed so he could never have a hostile takeover, and he would always have control. Now, with the sale, that was thrown out. Uh, all the old bylaws are out, and his stock is worth no more than anybody else's stock. He's got 11% of the company, essentially. And, uh, you know, he's the, the, the largest individual shareholder in the company, but not the largest shareholder in the company. And, you know, he can't, yeah, he can't force himself back. He can't, uh, you know, do much of anything. It's really interesting how they are trying to portray how Vince really didn't have anything to do with WWE um, during this period and was not really involved in day-to-day activities when he literally just negotiated the UFC deal with Saudi Arabia. So obviously he was involved in day-to-day activities because that was a major deal that he just negotiated. It wasn't like he was a figurehead, you know, which now they're trying to portray that, you know, he was just a figurehead. He had nothing to do with the wrestling. And obviously he had... He, you know, Ari did take him away from the creative end of the wrestling fairly recently. I mean, he obviously had um, input until, you know, what, October, November, you know, before he was pulled from it. So um, that's not that all that long ago. But, um, you know, the as far as as far as like the, the press conference itself. You know, having talked to several people and everything. I mean, the one thing that... Because people have asked me, this, well, what should he have done? And essentially what he should have done is he should have come out at the start of the thing and just basically read a prepared uh, speech that everyone went over and just said, you know, that... Um, people really ask what he should have done? Yeah, well, basically, yeah, they go, well, it was because I said, like, what he did was bad. Well, what should he have done? And it's like he should have had a speech out he there. He talked about it. He should have read it. He should have said that, um, you know, that... It's an uh, ongoing legal matter. It's an ongoing legal matter. Cannot we cannot discuss. Speak, we cannot discuss. Vince McMahon is no longer in the company. He had to say something about Vince. You know, by not saying Vince, he's running away from the, the story. So he had to say Vince McMahon is no longer with the company. Probably, if he wanted to be open and, and above board... Um, should have mentioned Brock. Brock is one of the biggest stars in the company, but he could get away with not saying anything about Brock. But he would have to say something about Vince, and, and you know, basically said that we're working to create a better environment. Like when you know he was asked, like what measures are being put in place, he should have had an answer for that. You know, I mean, it's just like everything. I mean, 
that was a bad one. And the other bad one, obviously, was trying to act like it was a great week for the company when obviously it was anything but a great week for the company. It was probably the worst week for the company since 2007. You know, I mean, that's it was a devastatingly bad week for the company. And um, so it was a very tone deaf answer. And um, yeah, I mean, that's probably a lot of what he should have talked about. Um, you know, they sh probably should have had something to talk about how, um, you know, just kind of like, uh, you know, something as far as like, you know, you know, as far as like just the, the healing of the company and we're, you know, going to not allow, you know, we were working hard with measures and things like that in place and something, you know, he gave them nothing. And obviously I know some people who said like, well, you know, what he should have said and he, you know, he didn't make it any better. And I know a lot of people are calling for his head and there's probably, um, you know, and Ari's getting a lot of, of um, you know, negative coverage right now too, um, which he deserves. But um, as far as like anyone should they go, I think that we need more information um, before you're saying somebody should be gone. I, But I do think that we, you know, they need to investigate and they need to, you know, not the one that they did the last time and they need to find out you know, again, it's like, who knew? Lots of people knew. You know, I mean, we know that. Um, but, I mean, as far as, you know, what happened um, or what has been happening or the culture there, you know, I mean, that's uh, that's something that really needs to be coming out. I mean, because obviously there's, there's, there's a lot more. It's been around for a long, long time. Yes, it stops and ends with Vince McMahon. He was the guy at the top. But... Um, as somebody said to me tonight, um, the whole place from every, from the walls and everything was, uh, you know, pretty much crawling with, you know, bad things and they need to blast that place up and they kind of do. Well, I mean, when you say that everybody knew, I mean, the, the question everybody is... Everybody knew certain things. Yeah. What did everyone know? Because everyone I don't, every I don't think most people... I don't think virtually anybody knew the extent of what ended up in that 67-page lawsuit. I think a lot of not, people not, suspected not, not, that not, Vince not, had not, girlfriends and, you know, Laurinaitis, you know. I, I think, you know, there have been stories about stuff like that forever, but not to this degree. I mean, there was nobody, no. there was not one person that I talked to, and I talked to a lot of people, that read the lawsuit and went, oh, you didn't know about that? Nobody said that. I mean, everybody I, I, was like, "Oh I, my God!" I had, I had, I had one person who didn't even work for the company, but you know, was best friends with someone who was, you know, with the company for de for decades. And I said, "Like, man, it was like really." Um, I learned, you know, there's a whole lot there that I'd never heard before. And just goes, "Why are you so naive?" He goes, "He goes like, you know, I was friends with X. I knew all of it." Wow. Well, what is? Uh... What is the end game? I mean, obviously, but uh, Janelle Grant's lawsuit. Well, I mean, it's really interesting because, you know, at the end of the day, I think that a lot of people now, as, as when these things happen, you know, you want to see the thing go to court. You want to see the truth come out. And again, like in most cases, almost all in these situations, um, you're not going to see that. And, you know, what's going to end is because... Ari can't allow it. He can't allow this thing to go to trial. I mean, there's there's no way. And really, even her side, it's going to trial is a big risk because, you know, there's no guarantee that she's going to win. But, you know, I mean, if she's convincing and has this story, you know, she could win a ridiculous amount of money because a jury, if a jury is sympathetic with her, um, and these stories are, and and these and there's accuracy in these stories. Um, Vince and and uh, you know and the company because the company's liable too. The company was sued. It's it could be pretty devastating, and the stuff being out in public in a, in a lawsuit would be you know it'd be giant news. It'd be a, a week far worse than this one if this thing actually went to trial. So it's not going to just like you know all the lawsuits. There'll be a, there will almost surely be a settlement if WWE isn't able to throw the thing get the thing thrown out. And I doubt it will go to discovery because God knows what they could find out. But I think that the key when I saw like um, Ann Callis on uh, on TV talking about this, the thing that really hit me was, you know, obviously, you know, again, looking for a settlement, but more 
hoping that this story brings out more people, you know, because it's like the feeling is, is that she's not the only one. And it's hard to believe, you know, I mean, like, again, there may be there may not be anyone else. The story's quite this gross and having the cell phone um, text message stuff. That's quite this descriptive. There may not be anyone else this this bad. But the idea is we know that there are others because there were, were there other settlements. And the idea is to, you know, make it to where, um, you know, they, they the NDAs, you know, if, if it's a criminal case, you know, the NDAs really don't 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 help you. But trying to get other women to come forward. And obviously, there's strength in numbers when it comes to that as far as getting a settlement if you have more women involved. So um, I think that that's a big thing that is probably, you know, you need to look out for. Well, we don't know if anything is as bad, but somebody did bring up today that what was her her supposed what was the settlement supposed to be before he stopped paying like three million dollars? Yeah. Didn't he have one out for like eight? Seven and a half. Seven and a half. He had a seven and a half. You know, it was That funny really I, makes you think about what happened where he had to pay seven and a half million dollars. And just remember This, this was three. Okay, okay. But think about this. Seven and a half million, that seven and a half million one was nearly 20 years ago or 15 years ago. I forget the year. It's like 2004, 2006. That's, you know what I mean? Like, like seven and a half million today is worth a whole lot more than seven and a half million then. That's you true. Know, you talk, and the other thing too is, is, you know, when we talk about that seven and a half million, that specific woman made more money as a performer in professional wrestling than not everyone. Obviously, like if you know, you're talking about Brock Lesnar, or Roman Reigns, or Austin, or Rock, you know, Undertaker, those guys made more. But she probably made more from WWE than Bret Hart. Think about that. Yeah. And and Jake Roberts and Macho Man and Piper and. Um, you know, a lot of the guys today, I mean, the top guys today, no, because the salaries are so much higher. But if you look at in 2004 or 2006, before these salaries were what they were, she probably would have made more money from that than all but, you know, the highest of the highest tier of wrestlers who had worked for that company prior to 2004. So it was like, you know, think about think about that. And like you said, yeah. What does that tell you? And she did accuse, you know, I mean, in, in her settlement or in her, her, you know, she did accuse him of, you know, basically, um, you know, that, 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 that it was it was sex against her will, essentially. And it was, you know, career advancement. And when when um, when she stopped complying, she was sent to OVW, you know, and, you know, from from the main roster. So it was. uh you know, it was those were th those were pretty bad. But as far as like the details, yeah, those weren't there. And I'm sure you know that's. And there's there's a lot of women who have said things, but they don't. You know, have have made remarks. I mean, even on Twitter and things like that over the years. You know, and you, I mean, you know who the win ones who left and were were not particularly happy about their tenure there when they look back, and and their treatment and things like that. But um, again, if there's anyone who falls into this category but you know that that remains to be seen you know but that is you know she did talk about that you know and callous as far as like we're looking to see if you know like with with a bill cosby or or every, you know anyone in that caliber you know the it's it's a quiet you know they, they keep quiet for decades and then all of a sudden when one person comes forward often many come forward and um i mean the thing is is, is if if this behavior existed in the 80s or the 90s or the 2000s and it's existing in uh, as late as 2022 that we're aware of, if this if this lawsuit is to be believed, um, there's, you know, it's a pattern. It's not a random one time thing, at least how it would look. Um, but, yeah, the 11.6 um, million with uh, inflation. What? 11.6 million. What? The, the, the seven and a half million? Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Yep. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.